Hey everybody, today I'm going to do a book review. <laughs> this is going to be a good idea to do a book review in a library. Trying to get my voice as soft as uh, I can while still audible to you guys. <clears throat> so today I'm going to start with the Olympics, Modern Olympics by Hayden Middleton. <coughs> so I chose this book because it is not too thick. Okay, so the contents and things. Okay, so this tells us about the history of the Olympics. Started with a simple game of jumping and running. And then the father of modern Olympics came about the idea of doing the new Olympics. Got to know that the winners for the Olympics uh, Aside from getting support and sponsorship from products and uh, the governments themselves of their own countries, they never get any monetary awards. Right? Their medals are their only rewards and the achievements. So this is the famous words in the Olympics. Cities, Arceus, and Porteus, which means swifter, higher, and stronger. Um, if I'm not mistaken, last year it was uh, mentioned like faster, higher, and stronger. Okay, so this one is the Paralympic. Okay, uh, 1988 Paralympic Games. Um, maybe we should Google on when did the Paralympic start. Here, in 1960, oh, in 1960, 400 disabled men and women took part in the first Paralympics in Rome. Okay, so actually, the Paralympics originated long ago, 1960s. Wow. 40 years later, which is the year 2000. Oh, the year 2000. So it means that this book was. Uh, let's see. When did this book got published? Says it. Does it say? Does it say? Yeah. First published in paperback in 2004. Okay. So this book was like 20 years old. Olympic champions in ancient Greece won crowns or wreaths made of leaves at the end of games. So see, they, they get leaves for winnings. Manuscript of the events gold, copper, silver, and bronze. So strange but true. An unforgettable opening. When the 1984 games were held in Los Angeles, USA, the opening ceremony was stunning. 90,000 spectators plus hundreds of millions of TV viewers watched a magnificent spectacle lasting four and a half hours. It featured over 10,000 performers, including a jet propelled rocket man. Oh, yeah, that guy on the jetpack. I remember that. 1984, I was like um, primary six. I was 12. Hmm. I, I remember that before landing in the Olympic Stadium, the Coliseum. Mm, I remember that. Who is this guy? This character is called Misha the Bear and was the mascot for the 1980 games in Moscow, Russia. So, this is so ironic, right? Because this year, Russia is not Russia is not invited or even 
prohibited from joining the Olympics. So this is quite historical. Watching this Misha the Bear, the mascot for the Olympics Games in Russia back in the 1980s. So this bear is wearing the medals on its belt, which actually is the logo of the Olympics, right? Hmm. This this is this looks um scandalism, scandalistic, is it? Swifter, higher, stronger, fairer. Today there is always fierce competition to host the Olympic Games. Bidders from some cities are so keen to win, they cheat. Oh, they got cheaters in the Olympics. In 1999, a scandal broke when it was proved that. Several cities had bribed IOC officials to vote for their bids. Oh, wow. There was another bribe scandal in the bidding. Oh gosh, this is ugly, huh? So among others that is interesting in this book are words to remember. It takes more than crossing the finish line first to make a champion. A champion rejects doping. Uh, so doping is uh, of course not correct. That's wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that this guy was disqualified because of doping. Who is he? Hold on. Okay, here it is. Ben Johnson. The Canadian sprinter Ben Johnson, who was caught taking drugs at the 1980 Games in Seoul, South Korea. He was stripped of his 100m gold medal and banned from competing for several years. Ah, this guy, Ben Johnson, 1988. Okay, let's look at some of the um, records, right? Swifter, higher, stronger. 100m records through the ages. Okay. So since 1896 until 1996, that is about a hundred years, a hundred years apart. So you can see these record holders broke each other's records, right? 1996 was called Donovan Bailey, and then of course 2020, 2020, Usain Bolt. Was the best. So a hundred years back from 1986, the best runner in the, I mean sprinters in the 100 meters dash took 12 seconds to finish it, while a hundred years later, Donovan Bailey of Canada took 9.84 seconds. I guess it's because of the intense training and uh, latest uh, training practices that they do and also some uh, equipments like proper running shoes, high-tech proper running shoes also contributed to that because I think, I'm pretty sure 1896 Thomas Burke from USA ran probably barefooted, right? Huh. I see what did I told you about the uh, technology technologies that contributed in the progress of Olympics and the Olympians Swift the higher stronger better bolts higher bolts all right so Olymp vaulters have made huge progress as their bolts became more flexible mm -hmm. you see so at the earliest game they use heavy wooden wooden bolts which I think are not even flexible at all. Uh, so it's been replaced with bamboos, which is much more flexible, aluminium, fiberglass. Okay, so 100 meters apart. Back in, back, back in 1896, um, the best heights is 3.3 meters while a hundred years later 1996 Olympians can reach 
to the height of staggering heights of 5.92 meters which is about around almost 6 meters of wow okay now we go to water spots hmm. i don't find water spots interesting <laughs> in this book i mean i love to watch the race when they swim in these pools but uh, i don't seem to care to read about it in this book okay this is the team sports uh, one thing caught my eye caught my attention strange but true olympic rugby champions the last winner of the olympic rugby gold medal was the usa that was back at the 1924 games in france oh. so 100 years later today france hosted uh, hosting it, eh? the olympics now um i just say that uh, france was expected to win but when they lost 17 to 3 to the usa the crowd booed and hissed so loudly that the american national anthem could not be heard oh wow that is interesting the sport was then dropped from the olympics and it is hardly played at all now in the usa huh? really oh usa oh yeah yeah okay so i know rugby rugby actually almost the same as uh, football american football but uh, with less shield and uh, paddings so yeah I, I know that rugby is not famous in the usa so yeah might as well they don't play in the usa maybe because they are taking this host country expected to win easily but why is it why was that wrong if they lost they lost if they win they win hmm. i guess uh, there's a, like a bias between the liking between the french and the usa yeah huh? right ah gymnastics gymnastics great olympians olga corbett corbett or corba corba and at the Munich games of 1972 everyone's eyes were on the athlete who came on the seventh in the women's all-around event okay so the story is olga is just a very free-spirited uh, young girl which is only 17 years old, 150 centimeters high, and just weighed 39 kilograms. So the rest of the gymnasts uh, really put uh, their full effort in uh, their training. But then this Olga just uh, do it uh, with her own uh, interests, and she won gold. I see. Some uh, some Olympians win one by only because of his weight. You may read here. Okay, this is what uh, interests me. Uh, super cycle. As I've told you before, I'm pretty sure futuristic and high-tech high-tech did uh, an immense improvements on sports by itself huh? okay Boris this Onishenko so this guy he he rigged his own <coughs> sword in the fencing competition that when he hits a secret button the light goes on and then he will get a point while well, actually in fencing you have to touch uh, a sword to your opponent's costume uh, 
us so that you can complete the electrical circuit and to have the lights on so he cheated and he was given a new name which, which is Dishonishenko Dishonest <laughs> okay. okay, this is what I like best, the torch Every four years I'll be waiting in front of the TV to watch the lighting of the Olympic torch and here in 1996 Muhammad Ali lit at the Olympic flame and I think at that time he was having uh, already having that uh, disease like uh, Michael J. Fox has right the um, I forgot ah, I forgot oh, the, the, the disease that he got sorry for him okay so at the almost coming to the end of this book there is an Olympic timeline here is where all the summer games have been held on page 28 and then on page 29 here is where all the winter games oh okay this is the summer games and this is the winter games mm. and some additional facts and figures okay just take one for example who is the oldest olympic medalist oscar swan of sweden's shooting deep who competed age almost 73 wow at the 1920 games in Arizona. the oldest olympic medalist so i guess he won a medal which didn't say here whether it's gold silver or bronze okay glossaries just to um, make sure that the readers will not get uh, double meaning or misunderstanding from the words or sentences for further information you can also read on page 31 and indexes in alphabetical order okay so that is the end of the book the olympics modern olympics all right so with that, I would like to thank you for joining me and if I can see, if I notice that I got a lot of views on this one, I will probably come back and do next and more book reviews. Let's see. Okay, I'd like to say thanks to you guys and I will see you in the next book review. Bye bye.